Hi everyone, I'm glad you found your way to this video and uh, welcome to my bedroom in Baltimore for the software demonstration video of um, the Osprey software. My name is Georg Oelchner, I'm the lead developer behind the Osprey software and today I'm going to take you to a brief tutorial on how to load, process and analyze MR spectroscopy data using Osprey. Um, I'm going to try and keep this really short because obviously there's a lot of content out there. Um, this video is going to be on YouTube as well, so you can always come back and look at it. I highly recommend that while we're browsing through this video, you can go to this website here below. This link will take you to the Osprey tutorial in the Osprey documentation. And pretty much everything that we're going to do is also uh, listed in this tutorial. So if this video is going a little bit too fast, or if you want to do it again, you can always follow the instructions in the tutorial. Uh, generally, just one or two quick words about um, the Osprey software in general. It is an uh, entirely open source analysis toolbox for MR spectroscopy data. And that means that we include all necessary steps for a modern state-of-the-art data analysis that includes automated pre-processing. It includes a step for linear combination modeling, which is the recommended and uh, well most advanced quantification um, step at this point. And finally, it includes the step of actual quantification, where we take the model parameters and convert them into something meaningful. That means um, estimates of concentrations of certain brain metabolites. The motivation behind Osprey was really that nowadays all the existing software solutions to analyze MRS data are either quite dated or quite expensive or both. And we also don't really understand the process of linear combination modeling very well, right? So on top of all of this, the pre-processing is frequently done in, in a very lab-specific way. There is relatively little consensus on how this is optimally done. And in response, we developed this all-in-one tool that gathers modern pre-processing steps in one place, gathers a modern linear combination model that is entirely out in the open. And finally, also the quantification and um, taking into account the tissue composition of the spectroscopic voxel. So this is all in one place. It comes with a graphical user interface that we're going to be using for this tutorial. And the advantage behind all of this is really that you are able, if you want to, to make your own modifications to the code. You can propose new modules. And the transparency of the code is really supposed to also provide increased rigor and scrutiny and also the workflow is designed in such a way that the analysis is going to be reproducible. So whenever you're going to use the same workflow definition with the same version of Osprey, you're going to end up having the same results. That's it. Let's just um, get started. I'm glad that you're all here and I hope that you will enjoy this presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, so at this point we'll assume that you have a copy of the Osprey repository downloaded and extracted, as well as a copy of the SPM12 repository. Um, both of them should be in your MATLAB folder, as you can see here on the left-hand side. We'll also assume that you will have installed the GUI layout toolbox and the widgets toolbox, which we need in order for the graphical user interface to be working. What we need to do next then is to add the Osprey and the SPM folder to the MATLAB path. So we right-click, on the Osprey folder, add it with subfolders. And for the SPM path, we add it without subfolders. This is important because they can otherwise be conflicting paths. So now we're all set to start an actual analysis. And the way that this is done in Osprey is by defining a job file first. The job file is really the only direct point of interaction between you and the analysis, and it contains paths to the data files that you want to enter, defines processing and modeling options, and also defines a path where output files are being saved. And for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to look at the job file that comes in the example 
data folder and it is called jobtwix.m. So we're going to quickly edit it and then take a closer look at the different entries of it. So let's scroll down and stop at the first section, specify sequence information, and this one contains the first field sec type, which is the sequence type. So here we determine whether the data sets that we provide have been acquired, for example, with spectral editing experiments or not. In this case, it's not an editing experiment, so it's set to unedited. The second field is called the edit target variable, and it describes the target spin system of spectral editing experiments if you have conducted one. If no spectral editing has been performed, we just enter none, as is the case here. Let's move on to the next section, data handling and modeling options. And here you can provide input on whether you want to save the process data in externally usable file formats, for example, if you want to do the analysis um, the linear combination modeling with LC model instead. So these are the first three options. You select the fit model and now in this case we only have Osprey available because it's the only implemented one as, to, as of to date. The fitting style is for editing experiments where you can either fit the difference and the edit off spectrum separately or if you change it to concatenated these will be modeled simultaneously. You also get to determine the fit range in PPM, the fit range for the water spectrum in PPM, um, the baseline knot spacing, and finally, whether you want to add macromolecule and lipid basis functions to your fit. In the next section, we will actually provide the paths to the actual data files that we want to use. So what you see here are generic path names that just ensure that this demonstration will work in whatever folder you have put Osprey. Otherwise, you have to provide the full paths to the files that you want to use. The first field files provides the metabolite data. So that is the water suppressed data. These are cell arrays. So you can provide multiple ones at the same time. The field files ref includes the line shape reference data, which is water reference data typically um, that is acquired at the same echo time as the metabolite data. The field files W is an optional additional short TE water reference, which will um, help you quantify water scale data with less T2 weighting. If you want to include metabolite null data, you can include these in the files mm field. And finally, the files nii field um, includes the paths to structural images, which we will later on use to do co-registration and segmentation. And finally, in the last section, specify output folder, you do exactly that. You specify a folder where you want results and different output files, for example, for interfacing with LC model to be saved in the course of the analysis. And at this point, we have really Osprey provided with everything that it needs to know in order to run its analysis. So let's kick it off. Let's enter Osprey at the MATLAB prompt, hit enter. The first thing it will ask you is where is your SPM folder? So in this um, dialog, you can just navigate to the SPM folder on your hard drive and you add it and click done and SPM, uh, sorry, Osprey will know what to do with it. We then see Osprey starting up. There's a splash screen and we're going to land in the start menu. Here you have, well, the options to create new job files or to load previously run analysis, but we're going to focus on the field load job file because we want to select the jobtwix.m file that we've just taken a look at a couple minutes ago. So we navigate to the folder, we select jobtwix, we add it to the right hand side and we click done. And you might see a window like this if you've previously run an analysis in the same folder. In that case, if you want to overwrite it, just click yes, and Osprey will start loading this job. This is the main Osprey window. A lot of the buttons are still grayed out because they're not accessible yet. So let's click the button load data first to load the raw data that is specified in the files in the jobtwix.m file. 
and depending on the file size and how many you have this may take a while so I'm going to speed this up really quick so we don't have to watch all these weight bars growing. Once this process is complete we now see the raw data with all the single averages um, we can do the same thing by clicking at the taps at the bottom for the water reference data and the short TE water data so we can always click back and forth between the various fields but obviously the raw data in and of itself isn't as interesting so we'll kick off the data processing by clicking on the button that has just become available after loading and we see that the data processing is taking place um, again this might take a while depending on what type of data you're processing in this case it was relatively fast so now we can see in the top left corner the raw data before frequency and phase alignment um, below that after frequency and phase alignment we see a summary of the frequency drift before and after frequency alignment and in the bottom right corner you see the final aligned and averaged spectrum which is going to be the spectrum that is fed into the modeling process again we can click on the tabs to see the same thing for the water reference data um, in this case we don't have frequency drift information available but you can see the same alignment before and after um, before we model the data note that you can always switch back and forth between visualizing the different steps of the analysis and you can also look at the different data sets that are included in your batch just by selecting it from the container on the bottom left so now what have we done now we have started the modeling process by clicking on the button because we actually want to do some fitting and this may take a little bit longer up to a minute per data set maybe even longer depending on your machine so again I'm going to speed this up so here we see the fit results for one of these spectra um, on the right hand side in this big panel we see the data overlaid with the fit we see the baseline we see the residual on top we see the individual contributions from each metabolite below that we see raw water scaled amplitudes for each metabolite in the table to the left hand side and some fit quality and data quality information in the top panel now we can look at the same fit results for the other data set contained in the batch just by selecting it from the bottom left hand container and we see that it changes and the display immediately we can also look at the fit of the water data which is obviously a bit less spectacular and interesting but you can do that now for the next analysis step we want to pull in the tissue information and we do that by clicking on the co-register button um, which calls in SPM functions to overlay and create a voxel mask for each MRS voxel on an anatomical image as you can see here and again we can select um, each data set separately to check that the voxel appears where we expect it to be now we call in the SPM segmentation functions and when you do this for the first time this will take a while I've done it before so this is going to become um, a bit faster than um, it might be in your case and as a result you see different maps for gray matter, white matter and CSF overlaid with the MOX voxel mask and again you can switch between data sets that you have entered in the batch right away. The next and final step that we want to look at is the quantification step. It goes very very fast. It uses the model parameters and the tissue information to derive quantitative metabolite estimates of various sorts. By default Osprey switches to the overview panel which we'll come to in a second but let's switch to the quantified tab first this is a table of various metabolite estimates for example creatine scaled or fully tissue water corrected again you can go through this for each data set separately this information uh, these data is also saved in CSV file format so you can immediately export it for example into R and finally the overview tab has a bunch of really nice functions if you have large amounts of data um, for example here you can look at the mean fit across uh, your entire uh, data set, your entire cohort, you get the mean fit, the mean data, you can look at the individual spectra for example 
and as usually per drop down menu you can do that separately for the water reference and for the actual spectra themselves you can display all the separate fits um, this is obviously not as interesting if you only have two data sets as we have in this example data set but it's going to come in really handy if you have 20 30 40 data sets and you want to filter out um, the bad apples out of this data set you can display um, the group results in a table which is also automatically exported and you can visualize um, group distributions of metabolite estimates separately for each metabolite from a drop down menu um, you can select the different um, estimation strategies um, with another drop down menu for example the creatine scaling or um, the water scaling and this is all visualized in rain cloud plots so you look at the distributions and mean values and standard deviations for almost all panels that we've seen so far, there is an option to immediately plot it to PDF. So you can create publication ready figures from the Osprey GUI right away, um, which is a nice feature. And finally, if you want to save the analysis, which is usually done automatically, but you can also um, do that here via the save MRS conf button. But for now, we're at the end of the demonstration. We're gonna hit exit and I thank you for your attention. That was already it. We're at the end of the Osprey software demonstration for now. Um, remember, you can always go back to the Osprey tutorial in the Osprey documentation. Here's the link again. And if you should have any questions about how to use Osprey, any sort of feedback, suggestions, critique, if you want to tell us that it's nice, if you want to tell us that it's not working very well for you, if you want to request a certain feature to um, accommodate your particular data. You can also always go to the Osprey user support forum, which we have integrated in a new portal that is called the MRS Hub. So you can go to this other link, mrshub.org. There's a forum and within this forum, you will find a subcategory for Osprey and you can post anything that you like to let us know anything that you want about Osprey and we try to be responsive. Um, I hope you enjoyed this brief demonstration video and that you have a great time at the virtual OHBM, that we get to see each other sometime in real life. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out in any shape or form and enjoy all the other content out there. Thank you very much for listening and all the best.